Hey there Dev Squad, Virtus here and welcome back to my C++ Fundamentals series. In today's video, we're going to be introducing you to the process of debugging your code inside of Unreal Engine 4, something that I wanted to get out of the way earlier on in this series as it is something that you're going to be doing throughout your game development career and is also essential to writing working code in C++. So with that being said, let's go ahead and move into an introduction to debugging in Visual Studio. So like I said, debugging is essential to development. Debugging is essentially the process of taking your code that you've got at the moment and finding any errors that you might have in them. And there's a couple of different things that you can do to debug your code and that's what we're going to be covering in today's video. So what we're going to be doing is debugging our code through Visual Studio, utilizing a combination of breakpoints, step commands, and viewing our memory. And doing all of this is essentially going to allow us to go through our code line by line to find out the exact state of it at that time and see if there is any issues in that state. So for those of you that don't know what a bug in your code is, a bug is essentially an error, something that's going to stop it working or stop it from working the way that you would expect it to. And this is usually the result of human error, whether it being missing syntax or just dodgy logic. And this is where this debugging process is going to come into play. All of this debugging is going to be done within the Visual Studio debugging mode. So what I'm going to do is take a moment to show you how you can actually access that debugging mode. Now, this is going to be something that you are familiar with already, but you won't have utilized. To go into the debugging mode, ensure that debugging is selected underneath your configuration settings and then run your application through the local Windows debugger. What you're going to find from here is that our interface is going to change. Having said that, on the right hand side, you are going to be able to see diagnostic tools and also the outputs and also our variable tracking in the bottom left. Now this variable tracking, I am going to be showing you how to utilize as we go through this video. So now that we are familiar with this special interface for debugging, what I'm going to do is go ahead and press stop debugging at the top here. And with that all being done, we're going to move on to creating and understanding exactly what a breakpoint is. A breakpoint is essentially a point in our application where it is going to take a break. It is going to pause. So essentially, what is going to happen is you are going to place a breakpoint on a specific line of code within your application. And then once you put it through the local Windows debugger, it is going to run up all of this code line by line until it gets to that breakpoint. Once it gets to that breakpoint, it is going to stop. And that is it. And once we get to that breakpoint, we then as developers have the opportunity to go through our application and find out the exact state. And once we look at that exact state, we are going to be able to find out if there is any bugs. And we're going to be doing this by looking at the memory. We're going to be looking at the memory in a little bit more detail as we go on to the latter part of this video. But for now, what I want you to understand is a breakpoint is essentially something you can put in your code to stop your application and allow us to take a deeper look into our application. So creating a breakpoint in Visual Studio is really straightforward. If you want to create a breakpoint, all you need to do is select a line of code by clicking on it and then press F9. And then once you've done that, you are going to notice on the left hand side here, a red circle is going to appear. This is essentially telling us the debugger is going to take a break on that specific line. If you want to get rid of that breakpoint, you can just press F9 again. Also, you can just press left click on this little column here in the same places where the red circles are appearing to create those breakpoints. Click once to create the breakpoint and click again to remove it. 
Now, what I've done is changed up my code a little bit for the purposes of demonstrating breakpoints to you in this video. So what I have done is deleted everything in my main function apart from a reference to our quick maths function, which we created earlier. If you don't have it already, you can also just copy it from here and also cin.get to stop our application closing. Now, what I'm gonna do is put a breakpoint on line 28. And the reason for me doing this is so I can show you how a breakpoint is gonna work in practice. So I've put this on line 28, just before any code within our main function is being called. So when we open up our debugger, and we look at our application, we are going to see there is nothing in our console window. And that is because it has taken a break before any of the code within the main function can be executed. And that is essentially it with a breakpoint. What we have the opportunity to do now is to look into the exact state of our application. And we can do this in a couple of different ways. First things first, like I said, we can go through our code line by line and see exactly what is happening. And the way we're gonna be doing this is by taking a look at the little yellow arrow in the bottom left here. And this is essentially telling us this is the next line of code which is going to be executed. And we can go through this code line by line as we use the step commands which we're gonna move on to in just a moment. When you're using these breakpoints, there is two main commands that you need to know about besides the step commands that you need to use. So you've got continue, which is going to continue to the next breakpoint, or if you don't have a breakpoint, it's gonna continue running the application as usual. You've also got stop, which is just gonna stop debugging entirely and close the application. But now we know how a breakpoint works, let's move on to going through our code line by line using step commands. So with our debugger still open, we are now gonna go through this function that we've got here called quick maths line by line. So what this function is going to do is essentially just take the value of A and B, multiply it together and display it on the screen. We are gonna be going through that process line by line of code using these step commands. These step commands can be found at the top here. We have got three of them. We have got step into, step over, and step out. Starting off with step into, this is going to step into the function that we're on at the moment. We've also got step over, which is going to step over to the next line of code within the current function. And we've also got step out, which is gonna take us out of the current function back to the reference of that function. So some of this might go straight in one ear and out the other ear, but you are gonna understand exactly what these different commands do as we put them to practice in just a moment. So let's start off with our step into. So at the moment, we have got our breakpoint on our quick maths function. What we can do is step into this by pressing F11. And then what this is going to do is take us into the quick maths function that we've just called. And you can see this because our yellow arrow has moved on the left hand side. And this is essentially telling us this is the next statement that will be executed. What we can do from here is then use the step over step command to go through to the next line of code within that current function. So if we go ahead and press this, you can see our arrow is moving down and down and down. Once we've done that, once we're happy moving through that function, what we can also do is step out of it back to the original reference of that function, which is within our main function. So press step out, which is shift and F11, and you're gonna be able to see us do just that. And then if we go back to step over, the next line of code within that current function is going to be cyan.get. So if we press 
step over, it is going to move to that. So hopefully you guys are starting to see how we can navigate through our code line by line using these step commands. So now that we know how they work, let's take a look at them in action so we can see what consequences it's gonna have on our application. So what I'm gonna do is stop debugging and then start debugging again. And then with this, with our application open, we are going to start off by going into the function by pressing step into. And then once it's here, while we've got nothing on our screen, we are gonna step into it. And the next line of code is going to take those two values and display it on the console. So once I press step into, you are going to notice it's gonna run that line of code. And then from there, we are then gonna have the result of that code being displayed on our console window. So this is how we're going through our code line by line. In addition to this, because we have this arrow here, we know exactly what line of code is gonna be run next. So we have a better understanding of the flow of our application, which is gonna help us find any issues or errors that we may have. So if something's doing something you didn't want it to, you can find out the exact code which is telling it to do that and on what line of code. So debugging is incredibly powerful and it can pick up any number of issues. So now that we know how to go through our code line by line, what I wanna do is take a moment to view and track our memory so that we know the exact state on that line of code. So we know how to get to a line of code. Now it's time to look at the state of our application at that line of code. So memory tracking as part of the debugging process inside of Visual Studio is really straightforward. So we've got a couple of different ways that we can do it. First and foremost, we can track our variables in the bottom left hand corner. Now in the bottom left hand corner, you have got three tabs. You've got autos, locals, and watch one. So autos and locals is essentially going to recommend variables that you might want to look at. And these variables are going to update live as you step through them, as I've just shown you in this video. So let me go ahead and show you exactly what I'm talking about. So what I'm gonna do is I am going to write a piece of code, which is just going to simply have a variable. This variable is int z equals zero. And then on the next line, I'm just gonna write z equals five and then end off that statement. And as we step through this code of ours, what is gonna happen is we're gonna see that value changing down at the bottom here. So as you can see now, this line of code is about to be executed int z equals zero. So if I step over, you can see the value is zero. And the next line of code is z equals five. If I go ahead and step over that, you can see the value has now changed. So having said that, we can use these tabs down at the bottom here to keep track of our memory and more specifically, our variables. So like I said before, autos and locals is going to allow us to see recommended variables that we might want to track, whereas watch one is going to allow us to manually set and actively monitor specific variables that we want on there. So if I press this first entry, I can then search for Z, press enter, and I'm gonna have some errors. And this error is just because the name is not correct. I've capitalized it. So make sure you have got this 100% correct. It is case sensitive. And because I've typed in Z, I'm looking to track Z, it's showing us the value of Z. So that is some very basic memory tracking. What I wanna do now is take that one step further. And the way that we're gonna do this is by opening up our memory view tab for our Visual Studio. So go to debug, memory, and then memory one. And what you're gonna get is this little memory view interface. And this is going to allow us to see the entire state of our application and all of the data that is being used within it. 
So, within this memory view, we have got three things. First things first, we have got a memory address, and then we've got the actual bytes of data, and then we've also got a ASCII interpretation of what that means. So, starting off with a memory address. If you want to find a specific piece of data, you are going to need to have an address for it. And you are not going to know each and every single one of these addresses for each different variable off the top of your head. So what you can do is actually manually type in the variable and this will give you the address and the data associated with it. So if we are looking for Z, so what you need to do is type in ambersands and then just type in your variable name which is Z. And what this is going to do is give you the memory address for this, which you can see ending in A4, and then it's going to give you the actual data for that. Now, with this, because our data is not actually initialized yet, it doesn't hold any information because we haven't declared or defined, rather, that variable yet, it is going to say CC. CC essentially tells us that the data is not ready to be used yet and this is a common issue amongst developing. If you try and reference data that isn't initialized, it's going to break things. So this is something that you can very easily pick up on. Now what you will notice is as I step over my code and go past the line where I'm actually defining it, you're going to notice in real time it is going to go and change to zero. And Having said that, you can see the exact byte data and its exact state within Visual Studio from here. What I do want to note is that it is in red because it has changed since the last breakpoint. And I also want to take a moment to say that two digits within this data here is going to make up a byte of data. So what I wanted to say is that within this big chunk of information that we've got here, two digits is going to make up a single byte and a integer is going to be four bytes. So having said that, eight of these digits, four of these little chunks here, that is going to be our four bytes of data. There is a lot more that you can learn about our data and our memory inside of Visual Studio, but I don't feel like it is essential. And having said that, I am going to be ending off the video here. Hopefully by now, you have a better understanding of how we can use breakpoints to pause our application at specific points, and then also use step commands to go through it line by line and then use variable and memory tracking to find out the exact state and find out exactly what is going on. Anyway guys, that is pretty much everything for this video. Once again, thanks for watching, stay awesome, keep creating. Your boy Virtus, signing out. This video was made possible by my supporters on Patreon. If you want more videos like this, check out my Patreon page using the link in the description. To stay up to date on new releases, make sure you follow us on social media.